Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a couple updates on the open hardware flight controller, NeuroFlight, and some other things as well. Before we begin, I want you to comment on your thoughts, theories, whatever, down below. And also I have set up a Discord, check the links down below. I've set up uh, channels for NeuroFlight, I've set up channels for um, the open hardware flight controller. So if you had a quick question or you wanted to contribute or you wanted to discuss something, we can go ahead and do that there. Um, I've set up both voice channels as well as text channels, so that's going to be very useful for everybody. All right, so NeuroFlight. Now, I want to explain a couple things about NeuroFlight. Some people maybe are having a hard time understanding what an AI controlling the PID actually does. Now, in Betaflight, it's basically Betaflight with the PID controller removed. Now, what does the PID controller do? The PID controller just tells the motors what to do. Uh, when you give it the input you say roll 100 degrees so it will try to roll 100 degrees by calculating the error from where it's supposed to be and what the gyro is currently reading so if it's saying roll 100 you told it with you know with your stick command that translated in beta flight to roll to 100 in the pid controller and the gyro is currently on zero degrees and so the pid controller will try to get to that 100 degrees as fast as possible and stay there now, if you have bounce backs, that's because you overshot the 100 degrees and it came back and it tried to level itself back on that 100 degrees. If you have an oscillations, what that does is you probably had a, you know, you shot over that 100 and you just went like this. And that's what makes that you makes your quad oscillate. Now, the AI removes everything and we train it. Now, some people, again, are still having a hard time understanding what this thing does and what do you mean by training it? Well, when you train an AI, what you do is you put it basically in a black box. It doesn't see anything. It gets a couple things. It gets four knobs to control each motor, okay? The gyro reading and where it's supposed to go. Nothing else. It, it can get ESC telemetry and all these things, but right now I don't want to put those in because it can read RPM, uh, the, the ESC telemetry RPM, and you know also we could have it read the uh, voltage and these types of things, but that's not what I want to do. I want to keep it with no telemetry so it's compatible with even people who don't have money for it. ESCs with telemetry and I want I don't want people to buy shitty BL Heli 32 ESCs just in order to get this to done but they'll have the shittiest experience of their life so you know just it has to be well balanced in my opinion right out of the box now uh, currently the project is not my project I did not start this project now I've had ideas of doing something like this but my idea was creating a separate board uh, in order to control the PID while you're flying and it'll tune your quad but when I was doing some research the other day, more into this topic, I found Will Kosh. He already created, he took Beta Flight 3.3.3. Uh, the reason he took that version is because it was the smallest, now it's getting bigger. And because we're limited in resources on flight controllers. So for flight control, I'll be using something like a F742 microcontroller unit, which is like, for example, the, Kikute, the new Kakute F7s. Those are, those are the F742s. They have more RAM, they have one megabyte of flash memory which is going to be pretty good. I'll have one of these linked down below. Check them out. Those greatly support the channel and keep uh, these projects going. So uh, again, if you put the AI in a black simulation, which is in the black box, it gets the reading of the uh, gyro and where it's supposed to go and also controls each motor. And you set up a reward system in the simulation that, you know, you give it a reward for how fast it got there. And if it got there and it overshot, you remove some of that reward. If it's oscillating, you also remove some of that reward. So it's just the, the, the total sum of rewards on each uh, episode or each generation or each test. Um, then, then it just learns based off of it. So it just said, oh, I, sh I went really fast. So they gave me 50 points. This is just theoretical. This is how it actually kind of works. But then, you know, what happened? Why did I lose it? You know, once I got there, oh, it's because... Okay, so I passed, I went to 120, so I guess that's not good. So what it'll do, it'll, again, in the next one, it'll try to go uh, below the line, and it'll say, why, why didn't I get the perfect reward again in that step? So something is wrong here. And then it'll get there and then probably start dozing off. It's like, okay, what did I do wrong now? It does that all by itself when you're training it, which is pretty nice. But you have to, it, it's... it's easy and it's not easy at the same time because there's a lot of things you have to figure out how many, you know, layers in how just, it just, yeah, you just look into it. You'll start getting an idea of it and I'll have more videos on this in depth later on. I don't want to get too far into this here. Now in the current, uh, 
project or the current workflow that I know of from reading Will Cautious paper is he's released a second simulator which fixes a couple issues that he noticed when he went to port into the real world, uh, which is, uh, you know, when you just basically motor oscillation or just like a very highly tuned quad that gives too many motor outputs, thus burning your motor. So that was incorporated in the simulations reward system that if you try to move the motor so much, basically like very high oscillation, then um, then you, you lose some of your reward. So it teaches it not to do that. So it's all in the reward system. But also there's another thing what he's doing is he's calling something the digital twin, which is he's modeled his own quadcopter to put in a simulator with, you know, everything from RPM, motor, propellers, and that's, that's, that's nice, that's really good, but I'm trying to think of it as the long run for everybody to be universal, and the way that I see it is we make it um, very universal at first, uh, it, and then as you go, it'll learn your quad setup, and then, uh, you know, it'll learn how, you know, your, when your battery sags, it should give a little bit more thrust to the motor, so in order to keep its attitude perfect or its set point perfect, uh, these types of things. So this is the idea. Now the final execution, I don't know, but everything is pretty much there. Uh, we don't have to create the wheel. The wheel has been created. We just need to create the rubber for it, the perfect rubber for it, you know, and get it sized just right and, uh, get it, you know, to work with rainwater and, um, snow, you know, just make it a nice, uh, well balanced, uh, wheel. And eventually it'll form into the terrain you're using it on. It's, it's kind of something like that. That's the idea here. And that's what's being accomplished. Now, uh, there's also more simulators. And there's also something really nice. There's a three axis test rig for quadcopters. What you do is you put your five inch full blown quadcopter, turn it on. And it has, you know, it's just a gimbal that just straps it down. You can move in all three axes. Now, that company I was in the talks with, and then they ended up closing up shop because their manufacturing was very expensive. So that was supposed to be here a long time ago for testing for other things. However, just yesterday morning, they wrote me, they said, hey, we have a two axis version now. Later on, we might have a plug in or just another upgrade kit to make it into a three axis. So I am in the talks with him, seeing where I can help him out because uh, I need to get my hands on that. And why is that? Well, this is going to be really great because train, stick it on the quad, on the gimbal, take a look at it. See, the motors are getting hot. Oh, the reward system isn't that great. Uh, something's going on. It's too, you know, it's twitching. Why does it keep floating off? These types of things is going to be very useful before actually sticking it up and going flying. Even though Will has already flew his, he took it easy, but it flies, thus telling you that this project is a success but just needs refinements and more work and more heads and more brains, basically. We need a team. So, and again, that's why I made the Discord. Programmer, you have a theory, just throw it in there. Come in and just, you know, throw everything you want in there. I'm reading everything I can, and I'm still doing my research. <clears throat> so, that's the current status of Neuroflight. Now, the open hardware flight controller, some people think I've abandoned it, but actually I haven't abandoned it at all. Um, I started creating a second schematic for the F742, because I'm hoping the open hardware flight controller with the Neuroflight kind of merge someday uh, in the future, and that's what I'm currently aiming for. Now, the open hardware F4 flight controller is complete. Uh, the base, the basic of the basic, you know, just a 5 volt, reg a 3.3 volt regulator. It didn't even have a 5 volt, I remember. 3.3 volt regulator, gyro, microcontroller unit, and like four motor outputs. You can, you know, do whatever you want with the schematic. If you know what to do, you can put all the outputs you want. And the OSD version is complete, but I would give it like an 80% completion. I do have a built one. I've built one here. I don't know where I put it, but I do have one. That, and I think this is it here. No, this is not it. So this is the just the normal F4 flight controller, that I, the open hardware one. But the one with the OSD is complete, and I built it. And it, it had a couple issues, but I fixed them. This, it was with the power routing to the microcontroller unit, but I've done that externally. Uh, but I had an issue with the OSDs not booting. Now, I think it's due to the crystal uh, because I, I, sh I bought resonators, or, you know, the, the crystal resonators. And um, what I think is because these some of them have different capacitive ratings also. I think I picked up the wrong one. So my next step is to remove one from just another flight controller and stick it on there. See if it works. If not, 
then uh, it, I think I'm like, I would say 90% sure it has to do with the crystal resonator. I'm pretty sure I got everything correct. I mean, I sweat blood on that thing. Uh, it took me so long to create. Um, but uh, it should work. I just need to find at least just two hours to debug it. Last time I debugged it, what I noticed was the crystal wasn't oscillating. So that could be an issue with either routing the traces incorrectly or me just soldering it incorrectly or just a different uh, capacitance uh, rating of a uh, crystal for the OSD. So the only issue is the OSD is not working. That's it on that flight control. Everything else is working. It's picking up, flashing. Everything is beautiful about it. Just the OSD, I need to figure it out. Once I figure out what the issue is and I get it to work, then I'll release that. And then I'll begin the basic F742 version, which is an F7 flight controller which is those big monsters. I mean, let me give you a comparison. The F722 is a smaller F7, <clears throat> same processing power. I, did a I made a mistake in the last video. It just has, the, the F722 has less RAM and memory than the F742. And look how big the F742 is. And here's just the F405. See the difference? That's crazy. Even the F7 is just slightly larger than this one. This one's still humongous. But it's just really nice to look at because, you know, it has more RAM and more memory. And that's what you need. But again, in future updates, we could just make Betaflight smaller because we don't need filters. We don't need anything. And that's it. It'll do everything by itself. It will learn, you know, at what frequency your quad resonates and then maybe, you know, set up a specific filter or just ignore it. That's all it does. Just no, no, That's nothing. Just ignore it and then it'll just keep your quad absolutely perfect. Now, regarding simulators, there's Jim FC uh, V1 or V0 currently, actually V0.0.5, which is the one that's released on GitHub from Will. Now, the neural flight section, the actual, you know, the flash and the configurator is complete. It's, like, it's basically beta flight. So that's complete. So all you need to do is just create the perfect model, the perfect trained AI, which is also called a model. And just stick it in, compile it, boom, flash it, you're good to go. There isn't really much left, and it's already a proven concept. Now, what I need to do is to, I've read his latest paper. I'll have it linked down below also, and I have a couple things also linked down below. If you check them out, those greatly support the channel. Just, you know, make click on them before you purchase, or just click on them. That'll really help the channel. Um, so, I need to, I'm planning on creating a different environment. For testing now these ai's are yeah the ai's what they do is they have something called a gym like you know how we go and work out in the gym they also have they've created something called a gym so there's a gym for everything there's gym atari there's gym fc flight controller which is made by will there is gym balance gym robots there's just a bunch of them and uh, you can practice a bunch of things over there <clears throat> or have your have your ai practice or train on them there's a lot of them. Uh, so he's created the FC version. Now I'm going to modify it slightly to incorporate the new rewards that he wrote about in his paper. And um, a couple extra things that I also saw or read or possibly misunderstood. I've read his paper like 10 times. It's pretty. It's it's a paper that you can't just read once and you think you fully understand. You got to read this thing over and over and over. I'm reading yesterday. Maybe I read it like 10 times again. Just reading it, trying to understand every single word, every single equation he has on there. Uh, especially the ones with the oscillations and uh, the the final version of Jim FC. So he, he's supposed to l release the final version uh, late spring. I can't wait that long. So I'm taking things into my own hands to create a different environment or something of that nature. Yes, the module dock for FR Sky modules, basically. Now, the, the Wi-Fi part has somewhat of latency, so I'm looking into ESP32s instead of ESP8266s because they have just, they're just dual cores, just have better processing. Now, do, will that help in latency? Don't know, but hope so. But it's not the end of the world just yet. It'll work fine, but the latency I don't think will be so great for a quadcopter. So for an airplane, it'd be beautiful. But... What is also going to be incorporated, which is really nice, and it has pretty low latency, is the option of USB. Uh, the stuff are still on the way. The current ICs, I just ordered them. So what that does is you basically, here's the, for, let's, let's pretend this is the, uh, the dock here. 
and you get your module, you stick it on there, and you have a USB here, and you put like a PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, or any kind of joystick you want, and you can fly whatever the hell you want. So that's really nice. Now you might say, okay, again, why the hell would you do this? Well, I'm not really doing this part for myself. I mean, I, I'm probably gonna buy a joystick and fly that airplane with, but this this is kind of a way for people who have some sort of a special need or disability, like maybe one hand, uh, missing finger, he doesn't have a thumb, he wants to fly something. So maybe he could, there's, there's something called a Microsoft Adaptive Controller for these types of people, some people. And what you can do is you can plug that in and then they will know what to do. They basically have these things. And, and, and if they don't, there's obviously, oh, there's a lot of things online for this stuff. So the idea is just to help also people who are just um, unable to currently fly. Because I've gotten a couple of emails. Uh, uh, it would be really great. So that's that's a project I'm also pursuing. I'm just waiting for this stuff to arrive now. Um, also, uh, for deaf people, um, I heard, well, a guy wrote me saying that, you know, his friend and he, he just doesn't know when the quad is on. Now, I didn't understand. It was very vague. I didn't get much detail, um, but what I under what I kind of figured out is is, is I don't think it means by he doesn't know when the quad is armed because he has the goggles on. It'll tell you if it's armed, and um, you know we can incorporate an LED for the switch if you don't have your goggles on. But that's not what I think he was trying to say or or what he wants. I think what he wants is some sort of a feedback system that tells him how much throttle he has on the controller. Because we can hear it. Remember, they can't hear it. So what we can do is set up, build some sort of a haptic feedback, like with some uh, vibrating motors or something, on like a little wristband where you put it here. Depending on the throttle you put, you know, the percentage is depends on it, the, the amount of vibration or the intensity of the vibration that would be in the hand. And I think that gives some kind of a nice uh, feedback into uh, to, to give him an idea of, of where he's at. And it gives him a nice sensation that... Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to, to feel or, or notice or, or hear, basically. So these types of projects I also have and I'm currently working on. And um, yeah, they're, they're going to be up very soon. This month is going to be a bit hectic for me. Um, I do have a, some family things to attend to. My son's surgery, my baby's son's surgery is feb February this month on the 19th. So uh, wish me luck, guys, and wish him luck. And, um, yeah, that's just, um, going to be, a, yeah, just, I'm just going to be a bit busy towards the end of the month or half towards the, from half till towards the end of the month. So I'm hoping that goes well. And, um, yeah, but everything else I'm still working on right now. What I need also, um, I don't want to ask for support, but I, I really do need the support. Um, I actually need a stronger graphic card for simulations. But it's okay. I'm getting by now. Once I hit another level, and a really good level, then maybe I'll think of doing some kind of a crowdfunding. Maybe, uh, depending on your guys' feedback, first of all, because that would really help. Because I need a, a just better, a better hardware. To do everything. Uh, but I'm not complaining. I'm doing what I can with everything I have. And uh, but different simulate. For example, right now, Microsoft created a simulator. It's called AirSim. And it was closed source. It was made with the Unreal Engine, you know, what games use, high-end games use. And um, what they've done recently is they've actually released the source code. And that thing was meant to train AIs to fly and drive, fly quadcopters. It was pretty realistic. You got the physics and everything. They released the source code for that to easily attach your AI to any input of that world. So you, the, it's, <laughs> it's really good. Uh, you can test your, we can test the AI in a different simulation. Later on, I'm hoping like, you know, the other uh, simulation or simulators, you know, the drone simulators, like liftoff and stuff. Hopefully later on, once this picks up traction and we see nice prog progress, they can kind of help in some sort of a way, hopefully. Uh, I don't expect much, but um, that'd be really nice. And... Um, yeah, I think that's it, guys. So check the links down below. Join my Discord. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And any support goes an absolute long way. I do have a Patreon. If you can support me there, that'd be super awesome. And um, and yeah, that's it, guys.
I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.